it doesn't slice, it doesn't dice, and it definitely doesn't cut paper and fabric with the same blades. These are all 3D printer slicers. Let's get back to basics. How's it going, everyone? My name's Grant. I'm joined by the ever effervescent Victoria. And yes, if you didn't know, don't use your scissors to cut paper and cloth. If you would like to find a great way for a crafter to attempt to murder you, that is how you do it. But this video is not about 2D slicers. We're talking about 3D slicers and some of the ones that are out there because there's lots and lots of options. We've kind of rounded up a few that we like and hey, maybe you will too. But let's go through them and we're gonna start with our favorite. Of course, it's like we're Prusa shills, but I promise we're not. Not yet at least. Prusa slicer is my favorite slicer out there. It is free. It is 100% open source. It is available on any type of machine. So Windows, Mac, even Linux. They have builds for all of it. So if you have a computer, you can put Prusa Slicer on it. Clearly Victoria is off to doing more important cat things, but we love this, right? It's built for Prusas by Prusa. And I guess now that Victoria is gone, we should put Greenfield there, but it just freaking works. If any of you have Prusa printers and you've tried Prusa profiles, oh my gosh, like straight up. Yeah. Okay. They're definitely not the fastest and yeah. Okay. They're not perfect, but damn, they're close. Now, mind you, the community interaction is okay. Here's the problem about having softwares that are very popular. Everybody has an opinion, and no two people can agree on how to do something. That is really an issue with some of these larger adoption slicers, is that there are so many people out there and they all have opinions. So, whatever you see on the internet, take it with a grain of salt. If you have questions about your slicer or some settings, reach out to us at 3D Musketeers. Sure, we're definitely not the end-all be-all, but hey, we're not bad. I promise you, we make some pretty cool prints here. But their stock profiles for Prusa printers are awesome. They do offer third-party support, so machines like the Ender 3 and CR10 already have baked-in profiles into it. And it is pretty simple to show you how to set up your own profiles. And if you're looking to learn all of that, we're going to have videos on every one of these slicers coming at you shortly that will go into more detail about them. This one is more of your overview. Then we're going to get into the deep nitty-gritty. Prusa Slicer can also handle both FDM and SLA slicing as of recording this video. We don't know what's coming out of Prusa, but hey, you never know. Joseph is the kind of guy that buys llamas because he can, so who knows, maybe we'll see a Prusa SLS machine in the future. Please. I think really the big downside to Prusa Slicer is that with high poly models, it can be quite sluggish. It is definitely not the fastest slicer, but it gives you a lot more control than some of the other slicers. It's just something to know. If you have a Prusa machine, use Prusa Slicer. It's literally designed for it. But the one that most people will use and almost anybody in the industry has had experience with is Cura. And you may not know, but Cura is made by Ultimaker. Ultimaker is a 3D printer manufacturer. They make the Ultimaker 2, the Ultimaker 3, and all the other variants of the Ultimaker 3 out there, including things like their unlimited extension kit for the Ultimaker 2 and the Ultimaker original. Those are pretty cool, but that's not what this is about. Cura is a great software. However, it gives users way too much control. Until you know what certain settings are, it's best to just leave it as close to stock as possible. And because Cura is made by Ultimaker, stock, most of their profiles run three millimeter thick filament, whereas 99% of 3D printers on the market run 1.75. Ultimakers are one of them that don't. Cura is like Prusa Slicer, fully open source, so companies will basically create their own fork of it and then forget to update it because they don't care 
anymore. But Cura is under massive development. And to me, my biggest con is actually a plus in some regards that it gives you so much control. It can be somewhat confusing. Its UI, its user interface is relatively simple and you can limit it to only basic settings, but good Lord, there are over 200 if you don't. Future Grant here, Cura does not go to expert anymore when you first load it in. It actually goes to very, very basic and you have to enable all those extra features. So not as concerning for uh, new starters as I was expecting just because they've changed it since the last time I've used it. But you'll see all of that in the dedicated Cura video coming soon. And there are some decent stock profiles out there, but a lot of them do need reasonably high tuning to get to run well. And like Prusa Slicer, it does have a massive community, likely one of the largest ones out there because it was the big winner. Back in the day, we had Repeteer, Host, Cura, Slick3R, Slicer, S-L-I-C-3-R, Slick3R, which Prusa Slicer is based off of, it's a fork of Slick 3R. Now I'm gonna call it Slick 3R because I don't want to confuse you guys, but anyways, yeah, Confer, Ultimaker, Cura, way too complicated for the average user, but if you leave it on the beginner settings, it's pretty, pretty easy to use. Speaking of Slick 3R, let's talk about it a little bit. It is one of the OGs in the industry. It's been around for a while, and while some development has stagnated a little bit, their last big release according to their GitHub, was May 10th of 2018. It is still in development. Now, they make much larger releases than they used to. We're at Slick3R 1.3.0, whereas Prusa Slicer is making movement so much faster. Originally, Prusa was actually working directly with Slick3R, and then they opted to have their own forks so they could bring on their own development team. If you don't know much about Prusa, they're the kind of company that when COVID hit and they couldn't get their employees COVID tested, they bought all the testing equipment and just tested all their employees all the time. And it enabled them to stay open during an incredible pandemic inside of Prague. So when they were met with a slicer that wasn't really being developed at the speed they wanted, they said, we're going to fork it. We're going to do it all of ourselves. It is one of the old schoolers and I like it. It's not a bad slicer. And if you're used to Prusa slicer, you're going to notice a lot of the same stuff that exists over on Slick 3R because, well, it's a fork. Slick 3R being the original, of course, works with any platform that you have, whether it's Mac, Windows, or Linux, but it's a little stagnated in its development, and that can hurt software, right? The one we're going to talk about next, Simplify 3D, don't even get me started about that. But Slick 3R, while it is slow, it's also free, as is Prusa Slicer, as is Cura. It's free. There's something to that. It gives you a lot of control, but the UI will feel like eh, it probably hasn't been touched in a few years. Simplify 3D. This one, you either love them or you love to hate them. Simplify 3D is one of the few paid softwares out there. It is not great it basically never gets updated it is old school when it comes to its infill patterns it has absolutely terrible support its community is not all that great but it does have one of the best support generation algorithms out there period when we print really thin parts simplify 3d is really the only software that we can actually get it to work on without it truncating supports through the parts now because Prusa Slicer has gotten so good, we've just come to deal with it. Now that Prusa Slicer has their paint on supports, which was something that Simplify 3D has had for years and really been the reason why we would have recommended it at $140 for two seats. And no, they don't let you buy just one. Future Grant here, again, it's not $140 for two licenses. It's actually $149 for one license. Their pricing has gone up since I last bought the software. I can't recommend it. I, I can't recommend Simplify 3D. Um, and the fact that it's not open source, if you're 
buying basically any printer under a thousand dollars and if you're wondering some good printers under a thousand dollars we did a video right there you can go take a look at it but these are all open source and this software isn't and make your decisions there right there is some value into closed source but realize the newest version of simplify 3d does require you to be connected to the internet and if you remember the cricket debacles and all, all the things about drm that they're doing card peer for cricket entire playlist of me yelling into microphone you'll know that i'm not a big fan of cloud softwares because there is an inherent risk involved in it that is not shared by both the company and the user it is completely on the user for that risk level so i don't know i like it but we are basically 100 over to prusa slicer at this point every now and then we will use it but that's really it then we get into some of the uh different ones so we have idea maker idea maker is basically for raise 3d printers raise 3d makes printers like the n2 the n2 plus and some other ones that you might have seen they're not the cheapest printers but they are fully enclosed and have a reasonably decent support system out there uh, if you want to see us review a raise 3d printer let me know i can reach out to them and see if they've got one that we can take a look at and they do have a great community interaction over with idea maker because ultimately Race 3D has good customer support, just like Prusa has honestly some of the best customer support in the industry, period. Race 3D's customer support is pretty good, and that makes their community not as toxic as one might expect. You can automatically separate parts into assemblies inside of Idea Maker, which is nice. So that can allow you to really group things up and create assemblies rather than just like individual pieces on there. And it is really the one that kind of took over for the belt printers. But similar to Simplify 3D, it's not open source. The profiles are semi-restricted for third-party machines. So you kind of have to trick it if you wanted to use third-party machines. And because it's less popular, because it's made for raised printers, and because Raise 3D doesn't have a massive market share, it has a smaller community. But smaller communities are not necessarily bad. You're more likely to get people that know what they're talking about. So something to keep in mind there. If you own a Raise 3D printer, you're probably using Idea Maker. Matter Control is one of the OGs as well. It's most popular with Delta 3D printers because Matter Control handles a lot of that math that a lot of standard slicers just don't do. It has built-in Tinkercad style modeling. It's not great, but it kind of gets the job done. But of course, similar to Slick 3R, it's not updated frequently and of course less popular with a smaller community as such. When you're working on Delta printers, specifically from CME CNC, Matter Control is what they used to use, at least back when we were running Delta printers. Don't know what they're using these days. But Matter Control is valuable, but it is not my favorite. Kurimoto has become the belt printer one that most people are recommending. And belt printer, that's the CR30. We haven't talked about it too much. Um, I don't have one. And my feelings surrounding Creality printers in general is that they're more work than they're worth. And belt printers are cool, especially if you need to make thousands of a part. You can just click print and just let it do its thing. But there are some inherent issues with belts that you may not expect. So if you want to see a video about belt printers, make sure you get subscribed to this channel. Leave us a like and comment below. Let me know that you want to see something about the belt printers and maybe we'll get one or two to mess around with once we get the new sets coming in. Yes, new sets are on the way. I am excited for that. Kirimoto is relatively new. I have literally never used it. And in the Kirimoto video, I'm going to use it for the first time. And I'm going to actually go through it with you guys for the first time so I can talk about my experiences with it. Of course, for the videos on Prusa Slicer and Simplify 3D and some of the others, I do, of course, have experience. But at least for Simplify, I don't have the newest version. And for Cura, I have not used it in a very long time. So we'll see. The, those specific videos are going to be all about those slicers in general. So hopefully you guys will get some interesting information there. It is an online software, which... I think is kind of cool and it does process locally so you should viably be able to use it on even things like phones and tablets so if you are using like an octoprint farm you can use kirimoto and just send the parts to your printers wirelessly and yes octoprint where you're running printers off of raspberry Pis. let me know in the comments if you want to see that too we can talk all about 
Raspberry Pis and running printers off them because our time-lapse printer is actually controlled by a Raspberry Pi. And no, they're not delicious. They're made of silicon and they do cool stuff. <laughs> of course, with Kirimoto, since it is new, again, few profiles, small community, you know where I'm going with this. Cheetu box. Cheetu box. Cheetu box. Cheetu box is the preferred cheap resin slicer. It is not great, in my opinion. I have tried their latest version, and I cannot get it to slice clean files. It ends up putting random layers of nothing in my files, which is a problem when you're doing big resin prints because they won't stick together. Uh, so we use an older version of Cheetubox. It is not well optimized, but it is free. So, eh, I have issues with crashing. Some people do, some people don't. And they are trying to make it better, but they were kind of thrust into the limelight when resin printers became cheap. And I don't think they had the development team that was ready, willing and able to take on all of these new people with all of these ridiculous feature requests. It's been a little bit crazy. There are some very specific slicers like Super Slicer that was forked off of Prusa Slicer when they said, we want more stuff and we want it faster and we can get it there for you. Theoretically, you're supposed to be able to take your Prusa Slicer profiles and import them into Super Slicer. Did not have that kind of luck. And its UI is not as great as Prusa Slicer, but a lot of it you will recognize. I think if you're using Prusa Slicer, probably not a big reason to use Super Slicer in my opinion. And of course, there's that weird one that Fusion 360 made and then randomly abandoned a few months later. So, you know, there are some that we just don't talk about all that much. I figured this was a decent kind of 30,000 foot level understanding of the slicers out there. We're going to do individual videos about all of these. Yes, including Super Slicer. Maybe we'll just do one about like Super Slicer, uh, Repetier Host, some of the weird obscure ones uh, just for kicks. Again, let us know in the comments what slicer do you use and why? I want to know. Us, we use Prusa Slicer. We sometimes use Simplify 3D and we only ever barely use Lulzbot's version of Kira so we can reflash the Taz 6 because otherwise Lulzbot Kira is garbage. Uh, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let us know. Uh, we are really looking forward to doing this whole series on slicers because we've talked to you about machines. We've talked to you about materials. Now it's time to get into the software because yeah, it matters a lot. And your experience in this software can make or break your entire experience in this industry. So Let's have some conversation in the comments. I'll see you down there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. And don't cut paper with fabric scissors. Have a good one. <laughs> it, dices. it dices, but it definitely doesn't cut paper and cloth with the same pair. Okay, it doesn't do any of that. We're going to be talking about 3D printer slicers. Let's get into it. Cat, that was a great cold roll, except you're licking your butt. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you want more information on the materials for 3D printing, we did a whole video on it right here. And don't forget, we have a Patreon coming soon, so keep an eye out for that. Hope you guys enjoy the video, and let us know about this new outro. It's a thing for us. Hope you like it. See you in the next one.